Hi, and welcome back to Sex City on CIUT. I'm here with Christy Boyce on the line. Christy? Hi, how are you? Are you doing okay? I know you just came off a long road trip from New York City. I am. I just got in the city about an hour ago, and I'm I'm halfway to, del- to delirious, but I'm going to make it through. <laughs> well, thank you very much for speaking with us. I'm very excited about your project. Uh, it aims to combat stereotypes of what we dykes look like by, as your site says, doing, uh, I'm doing air quotes now for all the listeners out there, gay, queer, LGBT, XYZ, etc., identified women, illustrating the reality and sometimes surreality of today's gay lady. So my question, first question for you is, how surreal does it get? <laughs> I'm I'm actually not sure if surreality is a word. I might have just <laughs> made it up for the project. <laughs> um, it got a little surreal in New York. Uh, we did uh, some burlesque performance art inspired uh, shoots at Coney Island that involved uh, fake men's body parts. Um, <clears throat> wow. Pardon me, I got a bit of a cold while I was over there. Uh, so that was fairly uh, fairly surreal. Um, what's much more interesting, actually, uh, to me to represent is is the ordinary uh, lives. The, to get a grasp on showing some of the families and um, and and the fact that queers are are everyday people um, as well. So it's it's right now really really divergent on different ends of of that spectrum. If that answers your question at all. Absolutely. So I understand you're from rural northern Ontario, which I also am, and that was a part of what prompted you to start this project? Uh, In a way, yes. Um, When I moved to southern Ontario um, around 19 or 20, I was uh, shocked to find that a friend of mine had a girlfriend, um, a lesbian lover, if you will, Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually really attractive. And I remember being surprised that a dyke could be also hot. (laughs) Shocking. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Um, which, which of course, was based mostly on, on you know, the images that I saw, which were none or very, very stereotypical. You know, big plaid bush jacket and uh, and and a mullet um, and all that. Uh, not that that can't can't be um, attractive either. Um, so the idea started to germinate kind of that way. Is okay. So this isn't whatever concept I grew up with is certainly not what, what actual women look like necessarily. It's actually, you know, much broader than that. And um, I thought I was actually going to do a project maybe just showing the, showing hot lesbians originally because I was 19 and I wanted to meet lots of hot <laughs> lesbians. Previous. <laughs> um, and, and as it kind of sat in the back of my head as I kind of traveled and, and grew up a little bit, um, it kind of germinated into, okay, let's actually show what they do look like and let's have a project where... I work with people, um, and they can kind of present a concept of what they'd like to illustrate for themselves or a point they'd like to, to drive across. So how do you spread the word to get dykes willing to be photographed? How do you find your models? Uh, originally, it was purely through my own personal social networks, um, and fortunately through that, a lot of people um, that have either been photographed or liked the idea have then kind of taken up the torch and spread the word through their social networks. Um, <clears throat> in New York, what actually happened is I photographed uh, Sinclair Sexsmith when she was up here for the uh, Dirty Queer Sex Tour. She does uh, the Sugar Butch Chronicles. Yeah, I had and Sinclair she... on the show in November. So. Oh, oh, did, oh, did you really? Okay. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, you know her. Uh, she's amazing. Um, and she started spreading the word in New York, put it up on Sugar Butch. Um, a couple of people are in PR in New York that I photographed for it. Uh, the next thing you know, I, you know, it's been up on Dapper Q and, and, a, and a lot of uh, websites in New York City itself. So that kind of went off the rails as far as uh, what I expected to happen. Um, and I think I'm going to take a lesson from that and start to reach out to different people um, more directly and, and get it promoted a little bit more that way. Because the community um, in New York City, when people started reaching out on my behalf, you know, they reached right back. It was amazing. So, Have you shot anywhere else other than New York and Toronto? Uh, New York, Toronto, um, a couple different shoots in London, um, Ontario, which got a lot of people from the area. I drove out to Staffa, which I don't know where Where it is to this day, uh, to uh, photograph a couple of dykes um, in a farming community uh, for some maternity shots. Uh, I had a studio space in Kitchener, shot a lot of women in that area. Uh, There is a Northern Ontario shoot planned. I'm just working on getting everybody together for that. So kind of throughout southwestern Ontario so far, and then New York's been the uh, the first leap into the U.S. Um, in the last couple of days, I've got quite a few requests from Philadelphia, Boston, and San Francisco as well. 
so we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm going to have to find a sugar mama if I'm going to do all that. <laughs> uh, you know, you're going to rack up those frequent flyer miles, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Or driving. You drove from New York. I, I did. Um, yet now there is duct tape on my, uh, my side mirror. Um, it wasn't without a casualty, but uh, we made it. So what's um what's the process for figuring out the concept for each woman's shoot? Because some of your sh- shots are very high concept, and they're all very beautiful. And there's props and costumes. Oh, thank you. Um, it, it can it really really varies based on how involved people want to get, and based on a little bit on logistics. Um, for example, if I was going to shoot you here in the city, we'd probably meet for coffee. Uh, discuss it, flush out some ideas. I'd take some notes, and uh, and we'd we'd probably have, um, depending on your want to participate, a you know a, con- a a more highbrow, if you will, concept in place for the day that we shoot, um, which I was able to do because I was in New York uh, in November as well for that for some of those shoots. Um, but on the other hand, you know sometimes I get people if I'm in a city that email or call the day before, and if I can fit them in, um, I will fit them in and. I just say, you know what, <clears throat> bring some stuff that you're comfortable in, that you feel good in, um, whatever, anything that, you know, represents you or something you'd like to, to say, and uh, and we'll go from there. And, I mean, there's other times where I may have an idea and someone just looks perfect for it. So they, in essence, kind of just end up being my, my model for that shoot as well. Um, so you have a questionnaire that you ask people to fill out before you arrange to shoot them. I What's do. What's on the questionnaire and what do you get from that to help you? Um, what is on the questionnaire? Uh, one of the main questions is what does Dyke look like to you? Uh, which seems pretty simplistic, but you'd be you'd be surprised the range of answers. Kind of a, a broad, simple question like that, uh, you know, gets. Um, the main purpose of that question is if it's a really great, really interesting response, which most of them are. I will sometimes pair it on the website with their photo. So it gives them a little bit more dominant voice than just the photography, because I can actually have a quote from them. Um, secondly, it gives me ideas for a concept. Um, a lot of, for example, a lot of femmes fill out um, the questionnaire, and a really common theme is invisibility or femme visibility, mm-hmm. lack of, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, they touch on that, and then that kind of gets the wheels rolling for me for a play on that concept for their photo. Um, I, I, I have a, uh, a drop-down box for the PDF version uh, that discusses um, their level of, of nudity that they're comfortable with because I want to get that done right away. Mm-hmm. Some of Not them get them naked erotic. right away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't want to be asking someone about that on the, sh- on, on the day of the shoot because if they're not comfortable with it, I don't want to be making them uncomfortable. Do you ever have um, women come to you and say, I, I want to be naked, I want to do a sex shoot? Oh, absolutely. Shoot? Yeah. Um, the options in the drop-down box are the, the level of nudity comfortable with. The first option is I shower in my swimsuit. <laughs> so that would be none. <laughs> Um, you know, I would, let's say, you know, I would be photographed topless. I would be photographed, let's say, touching, kissing, cuddling with my partner. Um, the next one says something like, I I do, like, BDSM or whatever. And the next one just says, I'd fuck for art. I'm not allowed, I'm sure if I'm allowed to say that or not. But <laughs> I, I think did. it's in context. It's okay. It's, it's happened. Yeah, yeah, it's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, and I get some really candid answers from that, um, which, which is amazing. So, and, it, and it lets me know kind of where people's boundaries are ahead of time. And then there's also descriptor tick boxes in case I can't meet you in person, um, kind of to get a feel for, for, for what you might be like physically, right? So um, one of the options is, you know, tall, short, butch, femme, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, the most fun answer, I think, is fat and sassy. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> fat and sassy. <laughs> me too, I think, yeah. Um, so what's the end goal with this? Right now they're all up on your site, but do you have uh, an end game in mind? Absolutely. Um, I would. I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, Annie Leibovitz's book, Women. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a hardcover kind of coffee table style book, um, not to make any comparison at all to myself and, and her, other than the fact that we both are women, I think is about as close as you can get. Um, that was a really great retrospective on really interesting, really successful women photographed really well. That's a similar type of thing I'd like kind of us to have in the queer community um, of, of queer, like whatever you want to call it, identified women that you could literally have on your shelf 
um, in your home, <clears throat> maybe in the queer archives one day. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and as well with coupled with that, um, I'm the part of the end goal or on the journey. The goal, anyways, is to also have it show in different uh, galleries um, throughout, ideally North America. But you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to start with uh, maybe Queen West. <laughs> Um, and for women who might be listening and might be interested, your project is trans inclusive, yes? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very trans inclusive. Um, I, I am a little cautious when uh, approaching trans people. I'd rather if they approach me because I don't want to be assuming someone might be interested and, and have them not be or have make the wrong assumption about someone's like, gender identity. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example... Some trans men have participated in, in the project, even though it's called what Dyke looks like. Um, other trans men, I could walk up to them and ask them, and it could be a very degrading question for them, you mm -hmm. know, based on, on, on their, you know, sexual um, identity. And same goes for trans women as well. So um, anyone that, uh, you know, feels like they fit the bill and want to participate is more than welcome to. Great. Uh, we have to wrap up really quickly sure. here. So why don't we, you just quickly tell us how to find you on the internet and how to sign up for you to take beautiful pictures. Great. Uh, the website is whatdykelooksLike.com. Um, so you can sign up through there and that's also facebook.com slash whatdykelooksLike.